Hey guys, I'm Aaron. One thing that's really hard to do in a computer program or 3D modeling tool is create what appears to be randomness. So I want to show you a couple tips that I have found using the flip tool to quickly make what looks like random items. <laughs> that intro is a little awkward. What appears to be something, something. Um, what I mean is if, if I have an array of items laid out that are all the same, it looks very obviously the same. So um, I've been playing around using the flip tool, which many of you know has become one of my favorite tools, but I've been using the flip tool to uh, play around with the, you know, how to make things look like they're, they're not the same. They're not exactly the same. So um, I want to play with a couple things there just to show you kind of what I've come across as far as, as creating that, those ran that random look of things. Um, and we've used it in a couple live streams and a couple other things, but I just wanted to show you it's, it's kind of a neat way to quickly turn uh, some, a copy of one thing that looks, you know, taking something that's the same and, and copying it to hopefully adding some texture and some variance. Let's, let's take a look. Okay, so I have here uh, a couple of the same exact shapes. These are all, this is just raw geometry. There's nothing else to this. Um, if I had these and I wanted these to all look different, I might go through a couple things uh, to maybe, maybe I'll take this one, make this one taller. Maybe I'll make this one shorter. Maybe this one, I'll triple click and scale. And I could do that kind of thing to make them look like they're, they're different. Problem is, if I have to do that when there's, say, say I take all of this and I copy it over like that multiple times, uh, you can pretty quickly start to see the pattern, right? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to figure out a way to do this, make these kinds of changes so that it didn't look the same without spending a ton of time. Because what I could do here is I could come in and go, okay, I could group each of these uh, and then maybe swap one with another or, you know, take this one and scale it differently than the other ones. And then I, I could do that sort of thing. But the problem is that that becomes very time consuming and it's a lot of work and, you know, it's not, it's not ideal. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to add, maybe let's add a little bit more variance. Let's take, let's take this one and just scale it this way a little bit. So we get even more, you know, visual texture, I'll call it. And I'm going to grab all of that and I'm going to make it into a group. So my group is now a copy of four of these. All right. Um, I'm going to do something else here that I want to, want to, add to this. I'm going to go in this group. I'm going to put a square around this. So I have basically some handles is what I'm going to want here. So if I come right here, um, how big is this group? If I go from one side to the other, it's about, about four feet. So I'm going to add about a foot on each side. So I'm going to come out here 12, and go this way, and then go 12, I'm going to come this way, 12, and then you never guess what's going to happen now. I'm going to come this way and then go out another 12. All right, there we go. So that will give me a square about the bottom. Now, the reason that's important is because as I start moving this around, excuse me, Aaron, as I start moving this piece around, I'm going to want that corner and those edges to work off of. So if I do that, uh, it's close. It's a little bit of an extra space there, but I think that'll we can make that work in our advantage. All right, so what I can do here is rather than using move and array, one of the things I can do is just go straight to flip. So with flip, I can hit the modifier key to make a copy and drag that green axis over to the edge. And then immediately, instead of having an exact repeat, I'm flipped the other way. Now what I could do is I could also take both of these and I could flip them in this direction. Whoops, I forgot to hit the modifier key. Hit flip, modifier key, so I'm adding. And when I say modifier key, I'm talking about down at the bottom here. Uh, it's going to tell you to toggle, flip, and copy 
It's going to be different depending on the operating system. I'm on a Mac, so it says Option. If you're on Windows, it's going to say something different. But that modifier key will toggle that plus icon on and off. So when I pull the red one over like this, now I have four, and they're all they're all different now because they are the same. Um, you know, it, it does. I have an obvious pattern here because they're flipped both directions. But what this, what I could do is I could play with this a little bit, right? So I could take this one, slide this one over here, and then maybe grab both of these and slide them back over here, and starting to get a little bit more texture. I think maybe I'll do the same thing here. I'll grab this one, slide it over here, grab this one, slide that back down this way. All right, and then all right. So there, fairly quickly, we got we got a little more. It's a little more broken up. You can kind of see that. And we do this by making, like I said, we flip one direction then flip the other two directions. Now I could take this and I can do a combination of things. I can, I can, one is I can move, option move this group over to here, or I can grab that same group and option flip. So now I have one, two, three sets and you can see they're all fairly different from each other. I mean, there, there is a repeat. So this group repeats with this group. The other thing I can do is I can flip different amounts of them, right? So if I grab just two and I flip to here, that's going to look different than if I grab three of them instead of four and flip that here. So you can see there, I've only been doing this a couple of minutes and I have what looks like, I mean, there are repeating elements, of course, but I have a fairly decent random setup, right? I don't have a whole lot of repeats. And if I do have repeats, so say, all oh, right here, right? I got these two buildings, these two buildings. This is, it's obvious to see that these, these ones repeat. What I can do is I can grab two of them like this, grab that mirror again, and not, not option this time, just hit the red axis. It's going to flip on the other direction. And I broke up that repeating geometry. So just using flip, well, okay, we use a little bit of move there, but primarily flip we have a pretty random setup here and there's no extensions or anything else. The other thing, so if I want to add even a little bit more texture, right? What I could do is I could come in here and grab a few of these, just, just like that, just a, a couple of them, hit scale, and then we'll go uh, make those a little bit larger. All right, so now we got even more texture and we're really not messing with creating new geometry. We're not making anything new. We're just using native tools to go in and create that randomness. So there's there are extensions out there. We talked about random tools, great extension, it's awesome. Um, if for whatever reason you can't do that, I just wanted to point out that, you know, making, I'm gonna call it pretend randomness. I had this little guy here in case I screwed something up and needed to copy him again. Pretend randomness is, is not too difficult to do using just those native tools. So this is a weird one. And I know I presented it with flip because there's a lot of flip in there, but uh, you are using flip, move, scale, but you can pretty quickly take uh, a simple set of geometry and make, you know, which way am I gotta go? I gotta go this way. You can make, uh, you know, a pretty cut up context buildings, uh, greeblies for, for certain kinds of modeling. Anytime you got to break up that surface or break up that repeating pattern, it's pretty quick and easy using native tools. Again, this is not to take away from extensions like random tools, really cool e extension to go in there and resize and change the size of things. It's awesome. But uh, there's some cases where maybe you want a little more control than what random tools does. Random tools is pretty random. Um, something like scatter does a good job. Same thing, just putting different pieces everywhere. But again, very random. Uh, so if you ever need control, I want to keep things where they are kind of, but uh, yeah, you can do it pretty quickly using flip, scale, and move. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Are there tips like this that you know that you think other people should, should know too? Or do you have a workflow that you need help with and you, you'd like to, to get some feedback on it? Uh, or do you have an idea for a video that's unlike anything we've ever done before? Any of those would make great comments. Love to hear from you. Love to hear what you'd like to see. We like making these videos a lot, but we like it even more when it is something that you would like to see. Thank you.